Hi, I'm Nathan Cronister, and I'm going to show you how to build the Griffin Ornithopter Kit from BirdKit.com. The kit is made of mostly balsa wood, and it's very light. You'll see some other imitation kits that use bamboo and plastic. They're a bit heavier, and some of them don't even fly. Now, I don't want you to have a bad experience your first time building an ornithopter, so let's get things started off right. Here are the components in the kit. You get the balsa wood, a special high-performance rubber band, some laser-cut plywood parts, and the lightweight tissue for the wings, which has the design marked on it, and the instructions, which you should read. Uh, the video is intended as an introduction, but there may be some details in the instructions which are not in the video. Here are some of the parts that go on the front of the ornithopter. These are laser cut parts and here's the crank. This is the part that spins around and makes the wings go up and down on the ornithopter. This goes through one of the slots and we're going to glue the next piece onto here. The parts just kind of fit together. Now we're going to set this aside to dry. Now for the tail, notice you've got four balsa wood sticks here. We're going to use the two slightly shorter ones for the tail. And for the next step, all we have to do is glue those onto here. Try to line it up with the kind of angled edge of the plywood part. And once you have that lined up, you can let it dry. Now we'll use the slightly longer sticks to make the wings. Just put a little glue on there. Then add the plywood parts. And make sure you have a left and right hand wing. They're a mirror image of each other. This is the wing hinge wire. And the next step is to insert this wire through the hole from the back of the wing spar. We'll put some glue here this in place. And next we have this little clip that goes on there. We'll add a little more glue. The clip fits right here. And there's a little notch. The wire has to drop into that notch so the clip can go on all the way. It should look about like that. Make sure the tail is dry. Then we're going to take this plywood part and slide it onto the tail. Make sure they're together all the way. We'll put some glue on the body stick. This is the motor stick which supports the rubber band. And then the tail assembly is going to go on here like this. Just make sure that it's fully seated together and then you'll have a slight angle between the tail and the body, which is very important to having the bird fly correctly. Next, we're going to put the crank assembly onto the front of the body. Slide the parts together very carefully. That should come out the front just very slightly and make sure you have it on right side up. The crank is on the bottom, the tail bends slightly to the top. We'll go over this with glue. Make sure all the joints are nice and strong. Then 
then you can smooth that out a little. Next we have some brass tubing that goes through the little holes on the top. And we'll put some glue there. Basically gluing those to the top of the motor stick. Next I'm going to put the wings onto the bird. They simply slide into the brass tubing. Then what we'll do is put the connecting rods on. The first connecting rod goes around the bend in the crank and it goes on the left wing. The second connecting rod simply goes on the crank and attaches to the right wing. And we're going to secure all of those in place with the little rubber stoppers that come with the kit. And the wings can still slide in and out at this point. They're going to be secured later when we add the tissue onto the wings. So now we'll cut out the tissue for the wings and tail. The lines are already marked. We just have to cut along the lines. Now I'm going to glue the tissue onto the tail. You want just a thin layer of glue here so you don't add too much weight. Gluing tissue doesn't need a lot of glue. I'll smooth that out a little. Next we'll do the wings, so you need to make sure that the wings are all the way back in their sockets and they're down, in the down position. We'll apply glue along the wing spar first. Then we're going to glue the wing to the top of the body. Make sure those wings are back in their socket all the way. And the wing just kind of centers itself in place. Then you rub it to get it to stick. And we're all done. Okay, there is one more thing to do, which is tying the rubber band. The way I do that is I take the two ends and line them up together, and then simply tie a knot with the two ends. I like to work that knot to less than an inch, maybe from the end of the rubber band. 
And then what I'll do to make it more secure is I'll take the free ends and wrap them around each other. That makes it really secure and it won't come untied. We're going to actually double the rubber band like this when we put it on the model. So first we'll hook the rubber band onto the crank. Then we'll take the other end and hook it over the tail hook. You shouldn't put the rubber band on until you're sure all the glue is thoroughly dry, otherwise the model can break. When you turn the crank, then the wing should flap. For a test flight, we're going to wind up the bird about 50 times. If it doesn't fly right on the first try, don't get discouraged. It's normal for some adjustment to be needed. Now if the bird tries to attack you like that, it just means you have to add a little bit of weight to the wing on the outside of the turn. You can use a little piece of toothpick or whatever you want to use. And you may need to adjust the amount of weight to get the bird to fly on a nice wide turn. After adjustment, the bird should fly like this. When it's fully wound up, the Griffin Ornithopter can go about 50 feet in the air. It will be carried by the wind, so fly it on a calm day. The Griffin is available from birdkit.com.